amigos, welcome back to another video of the Ironhead Saga. I thought I might let you guys know and fill you in on something here before I get started messing with this again. The live feed that you guys saw, the spontaneous live feed about how I found the crossover shifter shaft, whatever it is, that I needed in my pile of parts. And I was so happy about it, I shared it with you guys. But guess what? It is not the crossover shaft I needed only it would be the crossover shaft i needed if i were to put that motor back in that frame now i'll explain what i mean by that when i bought the frame for this project this frame was advertised as a 57 to 76 iron head hardtail frame now i found out just by tinkering with this thing trying to put the shaft and the linkages all together you know this stuff right here i was having some issues with clearance and yet I have clearance with the chain, but the nut on this chain sprocket is rubbing up against this arm. So if I move it forward and I got plenty of clearance there, now this is hitting the chain. Now, if I get it somewhere in between, I really don't have a whole lot of clearance. And at the same time, I've got a bunch of slack down there where that arm is, but compared to where this tubing is, that's part of the frame. And I thought to myself, okay, well maybe I'll make a spacer. But then when I came around to the other side, if I made a spacer to make it fit, this thing will still will not expose all the shaft that I need. See, watch this. Now that arm is hitting that sprocket. Now check this out. I'm gonna take this linkage off of here. I don't have an E-clip on it right now. And let's go ahead and take this arm and push it all the way back like it needs to be. Now granted, this will never work like that. But anyway, then I come over here I have just enough shaft, but at the same time, it's still not enough shaft for this thing to fit because there's still more material to it. In other words, these bolt holes are still not lining up with the grooves that are on there because that's supposed to lock this in place or keep it from slipping off. So then it dawned on me and I, as I got to thinking, it was up until 1974 that all Ironhead Sportsters, even the K models were all right hand shift, okay? 1975 was the first year of the left hand shift iron head. So what Harley Davidson did in order to make a Sportster a left hand shift in 1975, they took the tubing, see this is a 76, they took the tubing which we used to be located a little bit further this away, they moved it this away, and then they changed all the linkages. What this arm used to do, or the one that was like it, what it used to do, it used to operate the brake. Well, they just made it operate the shifter and then Harley put a cable on this pedal over here to operate the brake. In my opinion, I think that really was a cheesy design. I mean, after all, cables slip, stretch, they break. And so it wasn't really until 1977 where Harley redid the engine cases on the iron heads. The shifter paw, which is located over here, they closed up the hole on the engine case and they put a whole nother shifter paw in the transmission where the shifter paw and shaft, which was one piece, would come out the primary and then you would have your lever right here. Back then you would have more shaft that would come out here that was splined and you had your shifter right here. But all Harley did was just change the kind of shifter paw for the 75 and 76 and just left the spline shaft part off of it. To sum it up, this frame is not for a 57 to 76. This frame is meant for a 57 to 1974. So instead of modifying what I have, which would be kind of sketchy and then modifying the frame you know one of the things i do need to do is go into the primary pull my clutch hub out and try and find out the reason why my kickstarter assembly will not stay in gear i can get it halfway down and then it will just let go so while i'm in there there's going to be those four bolts to the trap door on the transmission so why not pull the transmission out change the shifter paw out and make this thing a right hand shift motorcycle that will be fun so yes this iron head project, which I did not see coming, yeah, it's gonna go from a left hand shift to a right hand shift. As of yesterday, as of me doing my research and coming to this conclusion, I made a purchase. I have a brake lever coming. I have a new shifter arm crossover shaft, whatever it's called. And I also have a new shifter paw coming. So I'll go ahead and uh, get started on what else I'm gonna do on this bike and see how the day goes.
kind of cool, not too much trouble, and I'm kind of glad I had a puller. I didn't know I was going to need one to get the motor sprocket off, as you guys saw that. Sometimes I have tools I need, but I'll tell you something else. One tool that I don't have is a tool to compress this plate, because behind this plate are two coil springs that are putting some immense amount of pressure constantly on that plate. And there is a special tool for this. Basically, it's a piece of flat bar that has three holes in it. A hole for this bolt here, a hole for this bolt here, and it kind of goes across. And in the middle, it has a threaded hole when you run your stud through here to put pressure on this so you can get these nuts off without the coil springs coming out at you like a bomb. I don't have that special tool, but what I do have is a ratchet strap. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the ratchet strap around this motorcycle through the center of this plate right here because back in the day when I had my old 79 iron head, that's how I did it. But that's how I'm going to do it. Now, I want you to mark my words. If you try this and it doesn't work out for you, which this may not work out for me because it's not always a guarantee, um, remember, I did not tell you to do it this way. This is just how I'm doing it. So if you go to do this and it's a complete fail and you have a mess or stuff breaks or you hurt yourself, I didn't tell you to do it that way. In other words, it's my way of saying, do not try this at home. Okay, I'm down to the last two, and it's a 50-50 shot. Again, don't do this at home, okay? Well, that went a lot better than I expected. Of course, I don't know what to expect sometimes, so I'm glad it worked out that way. I've seen one time where a guy put his foot up against it while he was laying on the ground and then he let go and parts went everywhere. It was a big old mess and it could have been hurt seriously, you know? So again, I didn't tell you to do it like that, but if you do do it like that and it doesn't go well for you and well, here's a lawyer you can call. Their money. We don't care about them. Oh, hey, didn't know Saddle Frank had a lawyer, did you? Well, that's right. Get ready, sit back, and hold on, because I'm Richard Make It Up, and my partner John As We Go make up the law firm of Make It Up As We Go. Anyway, since you're here, bad ratchet strap, call us. Chopper not chopping, call us. Sprocket lost a tooth, call us now. We're here to get money for you, and us too. Back to saddle trap. All right, now that I've got the bike jacked up, as you can see, and I don't have to bend over any more than I need to, I can sit rather comfortable. So this is my kicker ratchet assembly. And here's how it works. My kicker shaft where my pedal is, is on this gear, or this gear is on that shaft, shall I say. As I kick start, it turns, and the spring pushes this gear out like that, but it doesn't come all the way out because it's still partially engaged like that as this gear right here still turns. Anyway, it comes out and as this gear turns, it turns this gear, which these teeth grab onto the ratchet plate that's on the back side of the clutch. And it turns the whole entire engine over as you kick it. And it actually looks like these teeth are in pretty good shape. I mean, the and the bushing slides well on the shaft 
the spring seems to work okay so I mean it, it protrudes past this gear right here which tells me that it's actually doing its job by keeping it against the clutch basket so this is the clutch basket to the back side that gear jumps out and it grabs onto these teeth right here and it looks like it's been skipping because you can see the wear marks on the top side which you shouldn't see that you know and so this looks like it might be the culprit come check this out this is what i was talking about these teeth on this ratchet gear they're supposed to latch onto this when the spring pushes it out see how these teeth are worn it's, and it's supposed to grab and turn this thing but as i'm turning it i could see that it wants to raise up a little bit even though i have pressure down on it it's probably mainly because of the wear marks down on here that would mushroom up against these teeth and of course there's a lot of this that's worn down so that means that it is in order for a new ratchet plates you know the bushing seems to look okay you know it doesn't have any uh you know slack on the shaft that it runs on but maybe i'll get a new spring or something like that to go along with it you know we'll see now something really fun let's see if we can pull that tranny out too bad it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be in fact it wasn't even all that hard four bolts and the thing came right out of the case as you can see there it is now let's see what it looks like on the inside of that transmission case oh there's all my little needle bearings for my main shaft just fell right out of there just like an iron head does which i kind of forgot all about anyway and there's this piece I came after, and let's see how easy that comes out. <laughs> and it doesn't want to come out. So, let's go see why. Oh, this linkage is stuck on it. Hold on, I need two hands for this. Okay, let's try this one more time. I think it'll come out this time. Just keep tapping on it. It'll come through. There we go. And that's it this is the piece that needs to be replaced in order to make this thing a right hand shift you see what harley davidson did as i was saying all they did was just change the linkages around this thing had a little bit more shaft to come out and that was splined and it would come out right here in order for a shifter peg to fit on it which uh i'm looking for one to show you what i'm talking about well you guys get the idea you ride motorcycles you know what a shifter peg is but yeah that's it here we are my primary is all taken apart transmission's been gutted out and i'm currently waiting for another one of these except the 74 and earlier version and the brake pedal that would go on the uh, earlier version crossover shaft or oh yeah and that crossover shaft's coming with all the brake rods and stuff so i can run my rear brake with uh brake rod linkages that type of scenario instead of cable because cable i just don't like cable you know for a scenario like that because cables are notorious for slipping breaking and stretching so uh, that's going to conclude this video i'm stuck right here waiting on parts waiting on all kind of stuff to happen and uh, hopefully uh, i won't forget how it all goes back together <laughs> so appreciate you guys hanging out with me here in the garage and i really uh, really enjoy your company thanks a lot so 
if you like what you've seen here comes my cliche again feel free to give this video a thumbs up it really helps the channel and if you're new and this is the first video you've seen because you are into iron heads and stuff like that feel free to subscribe and hit that bell notification for more videos coming up about this scenario right here I mean, I don't only just work on this iron head. I've also got other stuff I do, you know, but there's definitely more content coming up on this. So anyway, again, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching and you keep the rubber side down and you be good to yourselves. And thanks so much. Bye bye.